Denver departure unit. I did uh, C-28 uh, heavy with experience and engine failure. Need a turn. Mayday, Mayday, United uh, 28. United 328 heavy, Mayday, Mayday aircraft. Uh, 328 heavy, say again, please. We need all that again. Yeah, United Denver uh, departure, United 328 heavy, Mayday aircraft. Uh, just experienced a uh, engine failure. Need a turn immediately. Yeah, 328 heavy, left or right turn? Uh, left turn. There's never a dull moment in aviation. Anything can happen anytime, anywhere, anyhow. On 20 February 2021, we had one such moment in the United States of America. The airliner, United Airlines Flight 328, en route from Denver to Honolulu, declared an emergency. After it experienced an engine failure and had to return to base for safe landing. The aircraft, the 777, had 231 passengers on board and had to return to Denver after declaring an emergency. The aircraft was running on engines known as Pratt & Whitney, the 4000 series. The Mayday call came shortly after departure. And uh, fortunately, the crew was experienced. They were able to handle it quite nicely and return to Denver without much incident. Of course, this was not before the aircraft had thrown so many of its broken parts all over, you know, a mile long stretch in the suburbs over which it was flying. We could see pictures of uh, people standing next to broken um, portions of the cowling, and um, yeah, some some of some of it had landed actually on people's own yard, in front yards, just missing the house by mere inches. Preliminary findings indicate that a fan blade at the front of the engine came loose. In the process, it knocked out another fan blade. One of the one of the blades was found embedded inside the engine itself, and, and the other one had fallen off as part of the debris that fell during that uh, fateful flight. It was later found in a field where it had landed. You could ask yourself, why, why didn't they just continue to fly on the one engine, the remaining engine, the one on the left? Because this was not a benign engine failure. It was what we call a catastrophic engine failure. In other words, there would be so much violent shaking because parts have broken and have been dislodged from the spaces where they're supposed to be. Therefore, the engine has ceased operations and there's no hope of, of, of actually reigniting that engine. The engine had also caught fire. So this was, in other words, a catastrophic and uncontained engine failure. There's no denying that this was indeed a spectacular moment, depending on where you're standing, whether you are inside the fuselage as a passenger or you're in the cockpit or you're on the ground just marveling and watching this phenomenon unfolding in front of you. That will influence how you interpret this and how you see it. But it was a memorable moment. That incident demonstrates what we often talk about all the time that you know engine failures are real and the decision the window for decision making is extremely small you need to be on top of your game when that happens because you have very few seconds at your disposal to determine what the next step should be to fly everyone on board to safety fortunately every pilot is trained on engine failure procedures and they have to practice this you know quite frequently and in the airlines they do simulate these things on a frequent basis Part of their training involves a simulation of such scenarios so that when it happens for real, the procedures simply kick in without you having to, you know, overthink things. It must become second nature to you because, like I said, your window, your decision-making window is extremely slim. Therefore, frequent simulator training on this, um, on engine failure procedures uh, is, is what saved the day in that particular situation. The experience of the pilots also saved the day because they, they were both skilled pilots. They you know, had so many hours between them. It's obvious when you look at the at how the whole thing transpired that they were able to handle it without with with ease, you know, because they've been practicing, they've been doing this. As was expected, the FAA, which is the American regulator for civil aviation, sprang into action issuing directions on what needs to be done next. They immediately directed airlines to inspect all their aircraft that use the 4000 series engine. Effectively, all aircrafts that are flying that particular engine were grounded while the operators take those engines for inspection. Airline itself, United Airlines, grounded 24 of its Boeing 777 aircrafts pending the full inspection of those engines and determining what the cause of that catastrophic engine failure was. We've seen also online people saying, oh no, Boeing has done it again, not another Boeing. Remember, this is not the 737 MAX. That, that one was grounded a few years ago. It has come back now. It has been recertified. It's safe to fly again. So this one was not necessarily a Boeing problem. It was the engine that was a problem. 
That is why even the FAA in America has not grounded all Boeing aircraft. They've grounded only those 777s that are operating the 4000 series engine. So do not panic. It's not like all Boeing aircrafts are falling apart. No, that's not the case here. It's just a simple problem involving a particular engine, the 4000 series, that will need to be looked into. Please click like, subscribe and share. It's the only way we can grow this channel. Thank you for the growth we've seen in the past few months. Continue to support because that's the only way we can reach out to quite a number of our people. You know, we, it's the only way we can bring aviation content across Africa, from Africans, by Africans, for Africans. And remember, this is a numbers game. It's a question of hours. Whatever it is that you're doing, keep adding those hours. Whether it's an hour of reading, an hour of watching, an hour of sharing, an hour of discussing with your fellow aviation compatriots, just keep adding those hours. Because with every hour, the cockpit beckons. Until next time, I'm Jerry be sending out and saying cheers.